Welcome back. It's time for Motivational Monday. Too often we take holiday stress for granted. That's right. And what's worse, we often have higher expectations for this season than for any other time of the year. And planning for the holidays can actually leave us feeling impatient, cranky, and in some cases, a little depressed. Therapist Daniel Applegate joins us now to share how to manage the realities of day-to-day -day life conflict with our efforts to make the holiday season perfect. Hey, Danny, how you doing? Hi, Christy. How are you? It's good, good to see you guys. Good to see you. It's been a long time. It has. It's been March. Yeah. I, I yeah. haven't seen you guys since this whole thing started. So now we're already talking about Christmas. So holiday stress, of course, is um, difficult on any any year. But right. now, especially with COVID-19, talk a little bit about how we can alleviate some of our stress. It, it's so difficult this year. I mean, everything is just difficult. It's it, 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 expectations for the holidays normally i would say hey you know it's all about like being together well this year it really can't be that um so we really do have to set some realistic expectations this year in terms of not just gift giving but also like travel and and are we going to be able to see our family members and, and our closest friends and, and a lot of people aren't going to be able to um so, you know, this year we just have to be extra, extra careful, even with small family gatherings, um, especially where there are elderly family members around who may have pre-existing conditions that can exacerbate uh, struggling with COVID. Of course. And then when we talk about uh, the gift giving process as well, I know a lot of people, they just have to focus on that perfect gift that they want to give uh, for one of their loved ones as well. Can you explain to us? how we can, I guess, go about that and uh, maintain the holiday spirits, giving gifts, but, you know, maybe not be so focused on the perfect gifts. Yeah, I mean, the perfect gifts really don't exist. I mean, mm -hmm. at the end of the day this year, I think everybody understands the fact that, you know, most people are going to get gift cards, or if not gift cards, then it's absolutely okay to shop online, have your stuff sent to the person you're gifting to, um, the idea of, of wrapping a gift and taking it to someone, you know, that's on the table as well, just so long, you know, we just have to be smart, dropping gifts off maybe on people's porches, things like that. Um, budgetary wise, stick to your budget this year. This year, there are a lot of people hurting that have never really hurt before. Mm -hmm. um, and so just really understanding even, especially with the little ones, right? The little ones always want everything. Mm -hmm. um, trying to explain to them that, you know, this is a little bit of a different year. And, and you know, even even Santa has to, to, to make some cuts this year. Um, so, you know, just sticking to a gift budget, really trying to just not stress out about the perfect gift. Whatever we get our loved ones, they're gonna love it because we love them and they love us. And, you know, they can always re-gift it. That's a thing. <laughs> you know what, with that being said, how do we stay close to our loved ones um, when it's really not safe for gathering right now? It's so hard this year. It's so hard right now. Thanksgiving was sort of an indication of what it's going to look like. Um, a lot of people travel for Thanksgiving. I'm guessing a lot more will try to travel for Christmas, and then we have New Year's right on top of it. So thank goodness, like we're in 2020 right now, and we have all of this great technology that can help us stay in touch with people. So FaceTime with your friends, FaceTime, Zoom, Skype with your family members as best you can. It's not always going to be the safest and, and the best call to travel across country, maybe even across state lines sometimes. Um, and so just really get creative. I mean, we have the technology now. And so um, stay in touch with people and, and, and just do what you can. It's Everybody knows it's different this year and it's going to be and nobody's happy about it. And we all just have to kind of adjust on the fly. Yeah. What are some of the best ways to, I guess, cope with those holiday blues, especially for 2020, even if we lose a loved one for this year? What are some of the recommendations that you have for that? And every every year that just happens. We, we, read, mm -hmm. we, we, we read and we see those stories about a family member passing away on Christmas Eve or whatever. And, and let's be real. I mean, this COVID thing is no joke. And around here, um, that has as many people down as, as anything else. But just... Um, the things that really sort of play into the holiday blues, it's, it's, it's not being around your family and friends. It's feeling isolated, um, trying to cope with family changes, whether there was a divorce or um, something internal within the family, the loss of a, 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 an important family member. Um, you might see people drinking more often around the holidays. Okay. Uh, a lot of times 
holidays are uh, for some of us associated with a, a passage of time and, and, and family and togetherness. And for some, it's a reminder of them not having a family uh, for whatever reason. And so um, it's, it's just really going to be tough this year. Most definitely. Danny, um, I know a lot of therapists like you are busy this time of year. Uh, do, you, do you suggest making a call to make an appointment um, earlier rather than after the holidays? Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, I, I have yet to meet the person who can't benefit from counseling to begin with. And with this year being the way it's been with the pandemic and now with holidays being really challenging, um, where you can find time to safely spend time with people you love, please do that. Try not to isolate. Um, there are plenty of great organizations in this town who need help with volunteers, especially around the holidays. Stay active, go for a walk if you can. Um, a lot of people's preferable self-care places are closed with gyms and things like that. Um, and yeah, get the help if you need it. Don't be embarrassed to ask for help any time of the year, but especially this year, I mean, most of uh, most all therapists now have switched over to this virtual platform, and so a lot of our therapy is being delivered virtually, so we don't have to worry about getting out in the cold or in the snow when it comes and traveling 30 or 40 miles. So yeah, by all means, reach out, and and and, and, and let's give a lot this year, because there's a lot of people out there who, who normally haven't suffered who are suffering, and our community's always been great at coming together. And Danny, I'm determined to end on a good note for this Monday so we can have something to look forward uh, to here as well. What are some traditions that we can continue going into the holidays uh, that we might be able to go forward with while also maintaining a safe social distance? Any recommendations? Oh, I mean, Christmas carol groups on uh, on Zoom, that would be a great thing, right? <laughs> get a bunch of people together. Uh, I mean, that's the great thing about Zoom. You can get everybody together in one place and, you know, people are having happy hours and they're playing poker games and mm -hmm. like whatever. You, you can just do anything. But one thing I will say about the traditions, uh, something I've talked about a lot on here over the years is especially when it comes to, to grieving and mourning, um, stuff like hanging a stocking for, for your loved one who's deceased, um, talking to your friends and family members about memories of, of the person who we've lost, um, a lot of people are losing a lot of people right now. And so there's no right or wrong way to grieve. Um, just don't isolate, try to, try to find your support system. And in a pandemic, it's tough times to do that. And a lot of that's going to be via phone or, or, or virtually, um, take care of yourselves. Don't ignore the pain. You have to sort of acknowledge it to get through to the other side. And so if you're really struggling this year, we have so many great therapists in this town, um, and, and we're all so supportive. Just just reach out to someone and, and find a therapist that's going to be a really good fit for you. And sometimes you don't even realize how down you are until you have that great conversation with a friend you haven't talked to in a long time. Oh, I'm telling you, I, I, I challenge anybody. I mean, the, the, the question, how are you doing, is a very strange question right now because I think everybody is a little cranky, a little depressed, a little anxious, and a little scared. <laughs> yeah. But we don't say that. Oh, we're fine. No, we're not fine. Um, th there's, there's a lot of people hurting out there. And so a nice reminder to, 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 to end on might just be to, to be cognizant of that as you're out and about in the community. And, you know, someone might be having a day. Let's just be kind to each other. Hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we all needed that. Live TV. <laughs> there you go. That's whisper. <laughs> Be kind. That's a good way to end. Absolutely. Well, Danny, Danny, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate Take you this Monday. Good to thank see you. you. <laughs> you but too. more of the morning show right after this break.